former Supreme Court Associate Justice Francis Sardinesa. Um, IVP, IVP President Attorney Hilarion Firmeza Jr. Officers of the IVP in the Eden Chapter, our dear Honorable Judges, Prosecutors, Deans of the different law schools in Iloilo City, uh, members of the IVP Maiden Chapter, Maayong Gabi sa inyong tanan. It is so good to be back um, in Iloilo City and an honor to be invited in your uh, very important event tonight. You come together tonight to celebrate an admirable feat. As a chapter, you have reached 50 years riding through many highs and lows, growing in wisdom, and finding your footing along the way. 50 years means very, being more sure about your sense of purpose, of your place in the grander scheme of things. In particular, this milestone affirms IDP Iloilo's commitment to the mandate of public service. As custodians of the law, your fellow Ilocos have counted on you to stand guard for the welfare of your communities. Your organization has lived by this promise for over five decades, protecting the rights and freedoms of the public that you serve. Fifty years since, you have become an institution, solid and steady, one that um, the people, especially the underserved, can always count on. As you celebrate your triumphs, it is equally important to honor the past and the struggles that defined it. We endured martial law, overthrew a dictatorship, and lived through the painstaking work of rebuilding democracy almost from the ground up. As a people, we have made courageous strides together, and yet we struggle to find our moral north amid the challenges of our times. The world now revolves at a rapid pace, thanks to technological advances, yet millions of our fellow Filipinos are still steeped in poverty, bereft of education and opportunities to catch up with the demands of the times. Modern technology and social media have been weaponized by the powerful few tearing our social fabric apart for their own self-centered agenda. Many Filipinos struggle to distinguish fact from fiction and right from wrong. The consequences of systemic cracks continue to manifest in our daily lives when the poor have little to no access to basic services, when inefficient management prevents the distribution of aid, especially during crisis. When our medical frontliners had to recycle their PPE sets while funds for pandemic response were being stolen. When the well-off few can simply cut lines in government offices or in traffic and stomp on the less fortunate in what are supposed to be equal spaces. When advocates who speak truth to power are immediately labeled as enemies. When a young activist detained over prompt up charges has to attend, had to attend to her baby's burial in handcuffs. When we find that our laws are no longer responsive to the needs of our fellow men, especially of those at the fringes, thus betraying the core belief that those who have less in life should have more in law. In this long-standing systemic failures lies a painful but inevitable truth. Our people have lost trust in the law and our justice system. So they tolerate the wrongs if it means getting the help they need. They scar for connections, pay padded processing fees, and feel forever indebted to those who use the people's money to keep their grip on power. Right, rights only find meaning to them when theirs are violated. And even then, they open their arms to the perpetrators of these injustices. They have gravitated towards autocratic tendencies, embracing the brute and the crude 
who ordered the killings in their alleys and streets. They turned to justice, served through entertainment. They cleared the path for corruption personified, smitten by nostalgia and grandeur. Never mind that all of it was funded by billions stolen from their collective future. In this landscape, it is important to ask ourselves, what is our role in these trying times? How can we, as sworn defenders of the Constitution and the rule of law, do our part to resist the gradual yet seemingly inevitable erosion of our values and ideals? As Ilongos, you are no, known for your sound moral compass for your unwavering courage in the midst of crisis of values. You have stood your ground time and again for what you know is right and true. You fought valiantly for the shared desire to uphold our freedoms. You have long shown the rest of us that an empowered and engaged citizenry is crucial in realizing our shared aspirations for, our own, for an honest and competent government and the inclusive progress it ushers in. I trust that you imbibe these values as lawyers, that your history as a people has a significant influence on the way you conduct your pra practice. As we move forward, we must remember that change does not happen overnight. It is something we must build on little by little, committed to the cause every single day. In the process, we will face strong currents, attempting to turn us away from our values and against each other. Tomorrow, the high and mighty few will still be reaping the fruits of their strategic deceit. Corruption still runs rampant to the detriment of our aspirations for progress. After tonight, it will still be difficult to hold steady for the virtues we are truly bound to protect. Now more than ever, we are urged to stay true to our oath as lawyers. After all, our sworn duty applies not only when it is easy, but most especially when it is difficult most especially when it comes at a cost. While we must work hard for those we represent, we must recall that we have a higher duty to, and I quote, work towards promoting the rule of law in a regime of truth, justice, freedom, love, equality, and peace. To conscientiously and courageously work for justice, to do no falsehood, nor prevent the law to an unjustly favor or prejudice anyone, close quote. We are compelled to lay the foundations of a just and inclusive society, to be circumspect in the performance of our duties every day, which includes resisting the lure of small conveniences that empower the culture of patronage, to keep our eyes open and our resolve strong in the face of corrupt practices, to make our service available even to our less fortunate brothers, and to give them just as much of our talents, time, and effort as we, should, we would for our paying clients, to stand as our people's moral north and source of hope, to be their everyday reminder that the truth prevails all the time. As a fellow lawyer, I know there is no higher calling in our trade than seeing the wheels of justice turn in service to the last, the least, and the lost. And I know that no matter how difficult it gets, we persist and we anchor our worth and our work on the promise of a society which encourages and recognizes the worth and dignity of all. So again, congratulations, IBB Iloilo, on reaching this milestone, and best of luck 
to the officers who are taking their oath tonight, and to the new lawyers who are also taking their oath tonight as IDP members. Salamat din for inviting me to take part in your celebration. Yung kasato lang po kanina matapos ko, una may bosses pa. Maraming salamat. Mabuhay ko kayo na.